beat in Liquid much faster than they actually did. Anyway, new game, new pick a mat face. Bands, bands, picks, picks. LeBlanc and Cassiopeia for Team Liquid. And Dark Passage will have Rengar and Syndra taken off the table. So again, three mid laner bands have seen the trend so far in IEM of like the five mid laner bands coming out. So yeah, LeBlanc is still being 100% banned, but this is one of the first times I see her banned on blue side, which tells me that Liquid are not willing to invest the first pick on a gold blue champion. Because this is three mid lane bands. Now, we did hype up Immortal Root just a few minutes ago and say that he was like one of the rising stars in the Turkish League. But this is three bands on blue side against the enemy mid laner. Normally, it's red side who has to ban like the OP mids and blue side can like target ban. But not in this game here. And uh, that means Dark Passage Ooh. can ban our junglers. Well, last ban will be Rek'Sai, leaving up Lee Sin as the gold tier pick in the jungle. So. I mean, I actually think against Rainover, I don't remember many games where Rainover on a Lee Sin were like the oh, sickest no, carry in the world. Yeah, Olaf, like Rek'Sai, even Rengar, like, those are more picks you kind of think of uh, when you say Rainover. Rainover. So maybe they're challenging Liquid and Rainover to say, like, do you even want to play Lee Sin? And the answer is no. And Ku, on wow. the other hand, is a man who will, who will play Lee Sin. He's definitely uh, one of these mechanically gifted <laughs> like like junglers. In hey! They uh, they gambled and Liquid didn't want the lease in for Rainover. Oh. That's interesting. Well, Ku very happy to take it, saying to his coach, "Yeah, just I'm just going to lock this one in. It's going to be my It's pick. a pretty. It's like the best jungler in the game. So when that's available, you lock it in. Yeah. Like it's it's very simple. You don't first pick Nautilus, when the enemy team will just pick Poppy anyway. Because then you like actually give them what I consider the deepest of yeah. their top lane. It's not like you're gaining priority, nope. however, Lolo. It's also a flex pick, so Matt could also pick it away. But See, yes, I agree, but I think it's a terrible flex pick when things like Karma and Zyra are up. Because Dark Passage will just pick one of those two for the bot lane, and if you then put Nautilus bot lane, you're going to get smacked. If you put him top lane, you, then he picks Poppy against it, and you just end up trading tank for tank. And you gave the other team two priority picks in their first rotation. So this looks a lot like the Liquid pick and man phase we had earlier today with Nautilus first pick into uh, Olaf. Yep. Only difference was they picked Karma instead of Orianna here and waited with some of the other picks, but they're still saving the flex option. Uh, Olaf as well, a jungler that is slightly outdated, does not benefit from the new OP Keystone Courage of the Colossus. So he's losing out a little bit compared to other junglers. Ku even brought uh, Vi to the table earlier today. Of course, did not work out for them, but it was interesting to see. He went for a full damage build with Courage of the Colossus. Uh, and now Dark Passage, based on their next two picks. A lot taken away from the mid lane, uh, but that does open up more champions, potentially interesting champions, or potentially Victor. Yeah. Probably just going to be the standard Victor against Orianna. Not really going to change a whole lot in there. And we talked about Zyro Kama. Being a support choice, the reason Dark Passage is valuing Karma here is to remove that option from Liquid so they can't use the Karma Olaf combo where you speed up the Olaf with the Karma and he runs in your face and he kills you. Uh, that's why they are removing it here. And of course, Caitlyn being picked, something we haven't seen uh, at all this tournament, but I still no. think it's a super strong pick uh, because it just dominates laning phase so hard. Still up there with the trifecta of AD carries, uh, Caitlyn, Jin, Ash been seeing so far and Team Liquid now on their two final picks. Unfortunately they have left up AD carry and Picklick is picking so he may just lock in the vein for himself despite what the team wants. <laughs> but <laughs> Against Kate Karma that's not gonna work. Just I mean Jin is the most likely choice here. I feel like Ezra is another safe one if you want to have something uh, that can kind of sit back and try and farm the lane but Ezra does have a strong like first few levels. Uh, you can try an all-in, but Thresh is another champion that is benefiting a lot from the new Keystone, but can struggle against Karma Zyra because you kind of lose you lose the poke wall. You can't really all-in properly against Karma Shields, um, and it makes it a little bit difficult to play like this lane. So it's a tricky lane for Liquid to play, much like in the first game. Karma Caitlyn, to me, is such a simple, strong 2v2 lane. And uh, you know, you normally need something like Ash Zyra to actually deal with it. That was on the table. Liquid could have locked it in, but they decided to go with something different. 
Okay. Bold prediction time. Is it going to be the Poppy? It's probably going to be the Poppy. We might see a carry top playing like the Jace, the cannon that we've seen so far in IEM on 6.23. Whippo the Hippo got for us. It's going to be Poppy. Whoa. Oh, my God. You've got to do the, the longer. There it is. Poppy! You know, just no, because like, I wanted we, to add the Omaokai. Because uh, okay. we just come from All Stars. Didn't you learn anything from Dash and e -Buy? Yeah, I learned that I can't do it. <laughs> so I'm not going to try and do it. Like, that's the thing in life, Pulse. Do what you're good at, you know? Okay. Don't try and do what you're bad at. It's a terrible way to live life. I feel like you should always take those chances, you know? It's just like, if you don't try it, then you never know if you're good or bad at those things. So put yourself out there. Uh, and see if it works for you. I and, actually, and Whippo really, will I, I just put himself hate, out there and pick Malkai. I absolutely hate being bad at stuff. So yeah, I know. Whenever I start something, if I'm bad at first, I'm, I just hate it. But I like try and grind through it, and then if I turn out to be like okay at it, I'm like, oh great, now enjoy. It. All right, let's move on. Let's 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 do more with this. That's such a pro player mentality. And there's so many pro players who say the exact same thing. But bad at it, I'm not gonna play it. That's how it is. That's how it is. Anyway, let's see what we got with these uh, picks here, Paul Zorino. Once we get into the game, obviously we need to see all the players and play a little bit of fancy music. Guitar. Really interesting to see this liquid bottling again, kind of gambling with the 2v2 picks and making it a little bit harder for themselves to actually show up and be you know, the big carry lane for this team because they need to be the big carry lane. It's not going to be top and, and mid being star players here. Here we go, losers, best of three match set in Group B between Team Liquid and Dark Passage. I think we're getting pretty good at those uh, outros and intros now, Deficio. Yeah, we just, down. we just need to add an extra line being like, back in a minute, something like that. So it's not like the quick, like it's not Is that what they do on stop. LCK though? I don't think they do that. I don't actually remember no, specifically don't remember. When, uh, when it goes like that, but instead, pick and ban didn't really show us anything unique or fancy. It's a lot of the same picks we have seen a lot of. Like Thresh has actually been pretty, uh, pretty good support so far. Been picked mm. very often in, in this tournament. But overall, I think Dark Passage was just a very, very standard comp where only Caitlyn is the one we haven't seen before. Like we knew it was going to be a Maokai Poppy top against Nautilus, which again means the the value of first picking Nautilus is very minimal because mm -hmm. you get a tank and they get a tank. And they are very, very close to each other in terms of value. Unless Lolo just really feels like he can carry on the Nautilus, I just don't see the reason in first picking it. But obviously, Dark Passage gambled with the Lee Sin and said, we don't think Raynova is going to play it, and they were right. I mean, they could pretty much know that. Raynova hasn't really been that Lee Sin player as you were talking about <laughs> in Champion Select. And if he has the chance or the choice, then he will go for Olaf, which he has done in this game. Slightly outdated Olaf, we have to remember. Indeed. Yeah, but still seen it quite a lot in this tournament so far. So maybe players will start moving away from that pick in a little bit. I mean, I'm just looking at like Raynova's numbers. 2016, he didn't Me play yeah. any Lee Sin at all. 2015 on Fnatic, he didn't play any Lee Sin at all no. either. So obviously not the pick he enjoys. Olaf, Rengar, Rek'Sai. Every Lots time. of those picks. Yeah, most played last year, or 2016 is of course Rek'Sai. Immortaru and Golden Glue in the mid lane. Golden Glue, not the most of impressive performances earlier today on Rise. Uh, again, it was kind of a difficult composition to play into, but did have a very uninteractive game. Uh, I think he ended the game like 1-1-1. One, one, and one. Didn't really get involved in those fights very much. Uh, Immortaru, again, also not a stellar game from him. But I we mean, do have it, a lot yeah. of hope. They got, stomped, the they got stomped against the best team in this group. That's it, you know, none of them really played well. There's really nothing else we can say there about Dark Passage. So let's just forget that game, honestly, and let's just focus purely on this new game and kind of get a new impression of this team now. Same for Team Liquid uh, in this game here. Like, it's, it really is a second chance for everyone. And want to see how these players uh, match up against each other. I think Golden Blue on an Orianna 
would be more impactful than on a Ryze, because Ryze is like, Ryze can be difficult to team fight with, and you need to be like an aggressive player to really find openings. He's not that aggressive in fights. We saw that he was very really passive. Oriana, control mage, you sit back, you find that big shock wave. That's kind of the way you play around it. It's going to be much easier for him to actually have an impact in fights. Rainover potentially looking for a gank in the bot lane. He is level four, so the bot lane is level two. The flash, the flay, the hug goes wide. Holy Phoenix will preemptively flash away from Rainover coming in. The uh, CC spells were already used, though. Well, I really like the sidestep from Holy Phoenix right there. He knows that once Matt has cast a flay, then he will try and just instantly hook in the direction he just flayed Holy Phoenix, and he just takes a quick sidestep to dodge it and then flashes after. Gang of mid, Raynor has already used Ghost and it's just gonna do a bit of poke damage on him all to room. I say a bit of poke damage, damage. Yeah. Very low. There's Matt coming in, lands the Q, the death sentence. Big lip away, has been exhausted. Takes that Mantra Q to the face. Matt's still training away with Holy Phoenix. And shield comes up. And that was quite a mechanical misplay by Matt right there, not landing the hook onto Holy Phoenix. Now Raynor is top lane more actually, baby. Solo into this top lane. Tank's not doing too much right now, but what Whippo is going in and takes Nautilus out in the one versus two. Raynover, however, does have this kill secured. Landing the undertow, but got a hand to Whippo taking the Maokai and uh, destroying Lolo. Yeah, really interesting that he could actually take down the Nautilus in the 1v1. Lolo had flash as well, didn't use it at a single point in that engage. Really not something you normally see, like that's basically solo kill. Even with the gang on the way, definitely has been a misplay from Lolo on the top side. That's uh, interesting, yeah. A lot of fighting though early. Reyna has been acting with the gangs. We've seen them trading in the bottom lane. Big opening that Matt missed where Holy Phoenix was actually overextending without any flash. That's uh, looking again. He is looking What's for that happening? death sentence. The ignite lands and Holy Phoenix very low. This time it is actually Matt Life coming out here. Rogue throwing out the auto attacks against Piglet, but he's out of mana. He's being chased down. And Matt coming out with the auto attacks. We'll see if he can get Piglet in range. Unfortunately not, but that's a 2v2 solo kill there for the bottom lane. And what is Holy Phoenix doing? He's playing Caitlyn with insanely long range, with a range support next to him, and he's stepping into the minion wave, ignoring Matt next to him, just to start hitting Piglet, and of course he gets CC, and takes extra damage. Really weird trade, and been some misplays here in the early game, for sure. Liquid in the end benefits the most, and are sitting with a small goal lead, and more importantly, a kill and a massive CS lead in the bottom lane. Big misplays from a player you wouldn't really expect it from. Um, you know, he was a previous world contender. We saw him very recently in the EU Challenger Series where he was actually performing very well. He was actually the consistent player on that team. Yeah, I mean, he's been the best AD carry in Turkey for so many years, which is why it's so surprising. Like, he normally likes to play, like, very strong laning champions. He likes to play 2v2 lane. Rogue is a strong laning support as well. So, like, that's kind of one of the things about this new Dark Passage lineup. It's like, the Mortaru is, like, that new up up and coming great mid laner in the mid lane, and Holy Phoenix and Rogue is this super strong 2v2 laning bot lane. But then they make a misplay like this, and you get like really surprised because it was like an unforced error. Yeah. He didn't even have to take those trades. It wasn't Matt who, like, as you said, like Matt lived him or something. You're like, wow, Matt. sick out play, this is crazy. Matt no. lived him. Yeah, he Matt yeah. lived him. Top lane, Whippo uh, getting solo killed by Lolo. I, I don't really understand what's going on up in top lane because I, I was going to go on the spiel about how that matchup plays out because I've played a lot of tanks in the top lane. Uh, that's usually not how it works, but I guess it will in this one. Ku was looking for a gank in the bot lane. Holy Phoenix is going to carry on uh, fighting. Usually Maokai uh, doesn't do very well in the early levels. Historically, Nautilus is actually good in, like up until the first back because yeah. of Riptide. You have so much damage. Then when you get double Durans on Maokai, then you can be like, all right, my Q start hurting. You follow after the Nautilus. If you can break his Titan's Wrath, you keep punching him in the face, and your Q comes up so much versus the Riptide that you have the damage to actually out-trade him. We saw that uh, just as they were trading earlier. Maokai came out slightly ahead. Uh, but then Lolo also went back and grabbed double Durans and then just out-traded Bwipo, who I think inefficiently traded multiple times with Arcane Smash, so uh, dropped himself low on mana. But that's very difficult to do unless you're spamming saplings, so I'm not even sure how he ran out of mana. That was the reason why he died, because he just didn't have anything to trade back. I mean, that's kind of the crazy thing about the first seven minutes of this game, is that it is technically harder to misplay as much as we have seen some of these players do than actually outplay the other guy. Mm. Like, 
The two tanks have now died to each other in a 1v1. That almost never happens. The Holy Phoenix a play in the bottom lane, which was so weird yeah. to see unforced as well. error was a great yeah, way to describe it. Yeah, completely unforced error. Really a uh, crazy start. I know there's been obviously this break for the players as well, so maybe like just getting back in and like refocus is, is something they need, but Dark Passage has this really like strong setup here, I feel, both in the laning phase uh, with their strong bot lane 2v2 and at least in jungle, but also like later on in the game. They can't really force to, to make these mistakes and start falling behind because we are expecting obviously Liquid uh, to kind of match what Dark Passage is doing in terms of like individual talent and mm. skill. And then they Liquid, even though they have a lot of new players in this roster, most of the players have more experience playing against better competition compared to the guys in Dark Passage. Sure. True statement, Rainover. That is a fast Olaf following after Ku. He'll have to flash over the wall. Rainover taking away this red buff. Meanwhile, in the bottom lane, Matt lands another Q onto Rogue. Get the follow up from Play as well. Piglet jumping around, lands a bit of damage himself. And Holy Phoenix not really doing too much right now. It's Puerto who's under attack in the top lane. Eventual Maelstrom. Waldo over the wall, gets a staggering blow. Snare. And another dredge line. Ku can't really do anything and lining up with a nice undertow. Rainover is going in, but he's now under the tower. Oh, ho, ho, with his dying fur. But, uh, with his dying breath, rather, finds the double kill. But man, Ku right there, if he just lined that kick up slightly better, he would have hit both the liquid targets and he could probably have saved at least his own life. Well played by Raynover, though. That man is on fire. He was great earlier today against Giants. He's playing well here in the start of this game. Let's check out the replay. So, Raynover has no cooldowns right now. There's no ghost, no ulti. Still deal dealing a lot of damage, hits two axes or an axe of two members there. Then notice the kick here from Ku. If he actually hits this kick properly in Lolo, he's gonna hit both targets just when they're about to end on tower. But no, doesn't hit Rainover. And that means Rainover stays alive slightly longer, gets the one kill, and finishes Ku as well. So really well played by Rainover right there. Missed opportunity from Dark Passage as well. Multiple good plays from that jungler. And putting Ku behind uh, on this lease in, that was his priority pick. And he's not really been able to make anything of it so far. Whippo, who's been reaping in the rewards of all the plays that have been happening, has all of the team's kills currently. <laughs> yeah. So he's going to be a big Maokai. Uh, but relative to Lolo, who was doing pretty well in that lane himself. Back into the mid lane though, talking about Immortal and Golden Blue. It's just been a farm lane because we have two control mages. So and that's exactly what Liquid expected. wants. Like that's the thing for Liquid is like if you look at this new roster, Piglet and Rainover are the star players. Those are the guys you're looking at. So basically when it comes to like playing out the early game and what I expect to see for most of the 2015, or oh, sorry, the 2017 spring season, is like Liquid wants to have strong 2v2 bot lanes where Piglet can try and get ahead and carry and a jungler for Rainover where he can be active on the map in the early game and he can then decide where to gank. It doesn't have to be bot lane he's ganking, but the solo laners don't have to do anything unless Rainover is there. Lolo and Golden Blue are supports in that sense, trying to make sure that Rainover and Piglet can be the two biggest carries on this team. So it's gonna be a lot about the 2v2 bot lane, how they're laning, and then how active is Rainover and where can he gank. And if his solo laners fall behind on their own because they're trying to be aggressive, they're going to hurt Rainover's chances of actually carrying that early game. So I think what we see now is exactly what Liquid wants. Tank top lane for Lolo, Golden Blue on a control mage just kind of farming in the mid lane, and Rainover going ham on something like an Ola. The dog passes though, and it carries, and the components of that team that should really be working out are not doing so hot right now. Immortal though is 0, zero, zero so we'll have to see more from him later on into the game, but the collapse in the bot lane was not the best thing to see. And that's again why it's perfect for Liquid how this game is playing out because this one of the star players in Dark Passage, Immortaru, is just going even versus Gold Blue right now against Liquid. And ganking the bot lane from Ku though, not gonna be able to do anything. Did get a flash because Matt had to of course get out of the snare. Because at the same time Holy Phoenix, the other carry in Dark Passage, is behind in his lane against Piglet. So it's actually perfect for Liquid, equalizing the mid lane and winning carry versus carry on the bottom side. Who's going to be sticking around? Still looking for this gang to happen. He's still saying he Can't has TP down. the ult. No flash. Here's a TP in from Whippo. And a counter TP out from Morlo. Will be late to the party though. But that's an instant kill on Taku to start it off. Dredge line lands onto Whippo around the corner. Staggering blow into the CC chain. 
Nice dodge out of the death sentence, but it's gonna be one regardless, I have to feel. Will flash weirdly into a flay. That's a double kill for Team Liquid. Yeah, normally when you want to set up that dive pulse, you need to have a TP advantage. They didn't have it right here. So Lolo just followed down very easily with his TP and Matt just completely uh, outplayed. Koo right there, Koo went in way too early, didn't have his team around him, got caught by basically everything and Dark Passage are trying some things, but they are really failing the execution on basically everything in this game. So let's see, so Koo jumps in, Matt just literally has the box already, deals enough damage that Piglet can finish him and Maokai wasn't even here yet by the time Koo jumped in. And then you also see a flash now from Whippo that's like, where's he realistically uh, gonna go? Questionable. I mean, he obviously wants to flash over the wall and try and walk out, but yeah. Not the angle, if you're flashing uh, to the right. Well, maybe I guess he was. Let's see maybe what else happens in this replay. Actually, let's not see what Nothing. else happens right. in this replay. Motoru didn't die. Service maybe thought he did, and uh, he's good. Liquid is in a really, really lovely spot. Piglet is sitting on three kills, and Renov is sitting on three kills. Liquid fans, get used to this. Be happy when you see this because Rainover and, Li and Piglet can really carry games. That's how the team wins. On the sides of Dark Passage, just making some real weird plays in general. Um, so I mean, yeah. It's always worth mentioning, though, this is a, a tournament where many of these rosters are very new. A good chance to kind of test these rosters, see what they can do, and with their limited amount of time prepping. It's just mainly mechanical uh, failures from, from Dark Passage. Like, this dive here was obviously not the correct move because TP was ready I mean, for both, Lolo. right? It was not the uh, right decision right. and mechanical. And then there was a mechanical misplay in it. Uh, the fight up top lane where Ku doesn't get the kick. He just misses on Lolo and then they both die. Holy Phoenix again in the laning phase early. So like, there's been some mechanical misplays right there from Dark Passage and, and that's again why they're getting punished. Uh, so they're really not showing up with this new roster at all and I'm sure a lot of the Turkish fans want to see what Dark Passage can do. Like a lot of fans in that region, yep. very passionate as well. Fun to follow the region because there's all these football clubs coming in as well. Really being part of it. Lolo, not uh, able to connect the anchor though. We'll get a lot of damage on tower. Nice rotation here from Team Liquid. They took the top tower as the whole trade was happening bot lane and that looked so good for Team Liquid. Rainover was up there taking a tower as well, so it's even better for them. Whippo, along with Ku. That's not a resonating strike you want to follow up on. And a nice bit of damage onto the mid lane tower there for Team Liquid. Pretty much everything is coming up Team Liquid right now. And they have a gold advantage, tower advantage. Looking towards his dragon now, Matt is securing the vision. And Piglet's coming up from bot lane, so yeah, looks to be the next objective. Dark Passage only way back in this game is like through just pure team fighting. And normally, in order to do that, you need your Victor and your Caitlyn to hit like late game points. Especially Caitlyn needs to hit three items. And a Caitlyn who loses lane is so useless because she just doesn't do well in the mid game before she hit that three item point. And I think one of the reasons we haven't seen Caitlyn too much in this tournament is just because she can struggle to kill tanks uh, until she gets that massive point in the late game where she has like five, six items. Who is getting caught out has to jump over the wall. But if you think about Caitlyn, she doesn't have an attack speed steroid. And some of these ADKs need that to take down tanks fast enough. And because you have that weak mid game where a lot of fights are happening, people are saying like, you know what, she's too weak. We, there's all the AD carries who does the job better. Well, there's the point and click and uh, the other point and click. Very easy kill onto a mortar route in the mid lane. Ku also rotating in there. He just got an angry Viking in behind him. <laughs> what was that damage out from the dissonance? Golden Blue deletes the jungler. Holy Phoenix trying his best to hold this 2v2 in the bot lane, but Piglet is going in on them. 2 and 0 against a team liquid. Mid tower goes down. Oh no. Ooh, ghost into the bottom lane. Double ghost being popped by the guys. They're coming. Well, my condolences to Holy Phoenix's family. Uh, Rogue's gonna just try his best underneath the tower, but Holy Phoenix is dead. Rogue, Rogue gonna be pulled in with the dread line. Another two kills in the bot lane and the tower on top of that. This is quickly getting out of control. 8,000 gold advantage at 16 minutes. It looks a lot like the game earlier today between Kongdo Monsters and Dark Passage. That game ended in 22 minutes. Liquid will have to hurry up if they want to match that win time. And this is obviously just a very simple dive. After killing the mid lane, they walk down bottom side and there is nothing Dark Passage bottling can do. We've all been there in solo queue, and now they died again. <laughs> oh, oh, actually, no, they oh. hey. Perfect. Hope we get a replay of that, because uh, 
as we see aside the crime scene. I guess Liquid uh, was staying and finished the tower, and then they got so. But they have five jump. members there, so I don't know why that would be the case. No, I mean Liquid had the two guys staying. Oh, the bot yeah, lane yeah, yeah. stayed to finish tower. Okay, we it's gonna be my guess. Okay, so they just finished tower. They jump it. Oh, oh it's a nice TP. That's actually really well played. Good punish. Huh? Very important to get a kill on Victor. And that's real too. Yeah. yeah. Who comes in there for the cleanup? So. Pretty nice, just caught them on the recalls, stayed a little bit too long. Oh, now Golden Glow is coming for the flank here. TP as well. This could be quite bad for Dark Passage. They grab Koo in the shockwave. Golden Glow still coming down, and some damage out from Whippo. Rainover's going in, Otter Mortaru. Goodbye to the mid lane, the Machine's Herald is down. Lolo moving on to Whippo, lands a staggering blow. This is the dread line, but it doesn't really matter. They have a second hook, Matt finds him. And that'll be three more kills to Team Liquid. Revenge. And to add insult to injury, Dark Passage didn't even take the tower. Nope, they didn't get the tower. They're trying to get the top lane tower, but Piglet is up here defending, and he should be able to hold on his own, because he's fed as... Oh, no, yes. He's just fed. I'm not going to say the rest. Okay. <laughs> uh, I'm sure you could have added a plethora of words in there to this year. Your vocabulary has expanded recently. Oh, Piglet, there's one versus two. Takes out Holy Phoenix. Moving on to Rogue now as well. Actually having a hard time with those minions, but Matt wants blood, throws out the lantern. Rogue, does he have a mantra Q in there? No, he does not. Piglet with the double kill. Nice two and zero. He was fed. Pretty oh. damn fed, Pulse. And really well played by uh, Piglet here. Dark Passage once again, just simply losing out when it comes to individual skill in this match, and that's why it's 16 to 4 now. Liquid uh, able to snowball this game. Looks like a very, very easy game one victory for them, and one more game then, you know, potentially for Liquid, and then they can take on Giants in what should be an extremely exciting decider match, honestly, between EU and NA. But Dark Passage, we'll have to see if uh, there's anything they can do. Uh, it won't probably be in this game, but in the next game. Two games they've played so far, and they've, they've fallen behind very early. Very quickly, and they've fallen behind a lot of gold. So that's the important thing. This is a best of series, so they have another game to go and to think about their mistakes in this game and then move forwards with that in the best of ones earlier. Of course, you can't do that. You don't have any time to make that adaptation. This game is absolute nonsense, mate. Nothing that they can really do to pull this one back. Unless Team Liquid make a horrific mistake, but Jungler's fed, 80 carries fed. Win conditions are right there. Golden Glue, right. he's had a great game as well. Yeah, I mean, he's now getting his kills, sitting in their mid lane, and the rest of the team obviously being super fed around him. Rainova is behind, yeah. enemy lines with Matt. Everyone's there, an amazing strike. Uh, who's on Matt, but Holy Phoenix is being run down. He'll be dead, and Koo completely eliminated from the fight. Triple kill over to Team Liquid. Whippo and Amorturu heading to their tower. But Team Liquid are just so fast when it gets to these fights. And they kill people so quickly. 22 minutes. That's uh, the time they're looking to beat. Reyna wants more kills. <laughs> Moving on to Immortaru. Piglet coming in there as well. Whippo, still very tanky. So we won't be able to kill him just now when Immortaru does escape with his life. Has to burn the ghost. And Liquid needs towers if they want to finish this game quickly. This is another tower going down mid. They need to get into the base. I believe Conquer Monster picked up a very early Baron and used that to push all the way to victory. Sadly, with only two minutes left on the clock in the speed race, Liquid are slowing down. It doesn't seem like they agree with us that this is a race. Oh, yes. minutes. And we were looking at it like a speed run. Um, any percent, I guess, in this case, because it has been four kills over to DP, so it's not going to be a perfect run. Um, but putting on those objectives very important. They haven't looked towards the Baron just yet, no control wards on top of it. I would like to see Team Liquid just go for a fast Baron. Very much could do at this stage being over 10,000 gold ahead. Yeah, you want to know one of the easiest drops in the world, Pulse? What's that? Shot calling when you are almost 15,000 gold ahead. Because every call is the right call. Every single Ooh. call, except for let's go AFK in our base, is the correct call. Because even if you're 3v5, you probably win anyway. Yeah, most likely. And this, like, calling a fight here is pretty good. Lolo, flash, riptide, massive ultimate from Golden Glue finds two. There's the third kill and the fourth one to Whippo. It will take a little bit longer to chop down the tree, but Ku, the only member able to slither out of that fight. Four for zero. Team Liquid could get a lot of this. Oh, redemption hype. Great ice. Insane healing coming down. So that's the base open now. Tower going down, and it will go down. Sadly, not enough. 
time, I believe, for Liquid to actually finish the game. They might try, though, because they got minions They're here. Mustering for it. Oh, remember, guys, 22 minutes. I don't remember the exact seconds. Speed run hype. Oh, let's see. No, 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 no. They're realizing. Uh, ah, they want to go Baron. for it. Just go back to base. What are we looking for? Yeah, going back to base. Uh, Team Liquid, they had the world record in their sights. Would have been very risky. I don't think they could have done it. No, it's, it's worth it though, I think. I mean, like, when you're 19 kills over your opponent, I just say, screw it. Why not go for it? I love this. Big, bad tank. Gets to shot the ball on him and then nice shockwave. The two best targets you could hit as well. You can basically get a Caitlyn and Victor. Better. Literally could not have been any better in that fight. You see Peasy here Four for Team Whippo. Liquid. Whippo is a great name. Just feels great to say. I wish it was Hippo. Hippo. He was a player called Hippo. Of course, yeah, he lost his uh, starting spot. <laughs> well, yeah, he was he, competing now. against Rogue for the top lane spot with Kongdo Monsters. Rest in peace, Hippo. Maybe he'll get good and come back because he has a fantastic name. You know one of the problems is no one is called Moose. Moose? Moose is such a good name. I wish if I could change my name, it would be Moose on the Loose. Moose on the Loose. Such a good name! That. I could absolutely see that. I'm here with Moose on, like on the Loose. Moose on the Loose. Oh, it's such a good name. Martin, Moose on the Loose. Uh, there you go, you know, see? It rolls up the tongue. Maybe I should rebrand. Maybe <laughs> you should. Uh, if you go for your pro career to come back, Moose on the Loose. <laughs> Ready to go. It's a better name than C for that's for sure. Oh yeah, absolutely. Let's see. Oh, this is the hippo flank hype. Let's go, Buapo. Yeah, he's into the back lines. He's got the ultimate running and Ku. He wants to try and help his um, Buapo in need, but he's going to be flashing out just to get his ultimate off. What a disaster. Holy Phoenix hiding away. Tagged by the undertow. Hooks go everywhere, but one lands onto Holy Phoenix. That secures his demise. And Mortaru heading back to his own base. And Team Liquid running all over Dark Passage. They kill the inhibitor, and it's only a matter of time before they finish off the Nexus. Oh, all the hooks, man. Hook combo from Team Liquid. Let's see, they got Super Minions coming mid lane. Going for the towers. Lolo actually just not taking any damage from these towers whatsoever. Cool with the fake out. Oh, there's a quick sombrero to finish off the game, but the double Nexus towers fall. They probably could have pulled the Cloud Man and knocked them at the same time, but either way, 24 minutes onto the clock. It's not a speed run, but Team Liquid make very short work of Dark Passage in game one and take the win. Yeah, this game. Uh very early on, went heavily in favor of Team Liquid when we saw some of the mistakes.